Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my absolute favorite topics ever, and that is my garden. Not just my garden, but what seeds we're gonna be planting for 2023, and most importantly, why we're planting them, what we're gonna be doing with them later. You see, a lot of people plant gardens, especially a lot of first-time gardeners, and they just plant things because that's what they think they grow in a garden. And while that might be okay, I mean, let's face it, growing anything is kind of therapeutic, it's relaxing, it's enjoyable. But for me, I don't just want to have fun in the garden, I want to grow things that we're actually going to be able to eat or enjoy, um, something that's going to be beautiful to look at. So without further ado, I want to get into what we're growing in our garden and why. So one of the reasons why I grow such a big garden is because I like knowing where my food comes from, number one. But number two, you can grow so many more varieties of fruits and vegetables, so many different kinds of fruits and vegetables than what you find in the store. The store has things that were grown for being able to be shipped across the country, for having longevity on the shelf, um, but not necessarily for being the most unique or having the most interesting flavor. So while I can grow in my garden um, black tomatoes, striped tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, white tomatoes, um, tomatoes of every size, shape, and color, you're not necessarily gonna go find that at the store, unless you have a specialty store, which in that case, then yeah, maybe you could find some of those things. But I could literally grow, I think last year my total variety of tomatoes was like 25. I could grow 25 different kinds of tomatoes in my garden and have them all do well and have all of those different fla flavor profiles and you'll never find that at the store. So that's one of the reasons why I like to grow things in the garden. But the other reason is, um, one of the things I don't talk about a lot on this channel, but it is a part of my life, is last year I was diagnosed with, actually it was in 2022, so the year before last year. In late 2022, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. So for me, growing food in the garden means that I know where it came from, I know it doesn't have any extra chemicals, well it doesn't have any chemicals on it, and that we grew it organically, we fertilize with our own compost, now we have our own rabbit poop that we put in our garden, which is like one of the best fertilizers you could possibly put in the garden. Um, and I know that I can eat foods that are antioxidant rich, vegetables, fruits, they came right off our own piece of property. But last year the garden was not just for food production, it was also kind of my therapy garden. We couldn't go very many places last summer because I was in the middle of chemo, so I had a, I was immunocompromised. Um, so basically, the kids and I spent the entire summer in the garden, which was wonderful. My husband set up a tent for me out in the garden, a little pavilion tent, and I could stay out of the sun and the kids could run around and play in the garden. And in the evenings, we would do planting and weeding and things like that when the sun had gone down more. But the garden is just, it's a wonderful thing to have. Um, even if you don't want to grow food to put it away to store for the winter, if you just want to have fresh fruit and vegetables to eat during summer months, grow a garden. If you want to just have fresh herbs, herbs are like one of the most expensive upcharged things you can buy in the grocery store, believe it or not. You go buy a little pack of herbs and it's like this big. It has like three sprigs of rosemary and you're paying four or five dollars for that. Um, so grow herbs. But most importantly, grow things that you're going to use. If you don't use rosemary, then don't grow rosemary, unless you just like to look at it. Um, if you don't eat tomatoes, don't grow tomatoes. But I'm going to show you today what I grow, and I'm going to tell you why I grow it. And I'm going to show you, I have some of my books and notebooks here with me. And I'm going to show you why I grow what I go, um, why I grow what I grow, and what we're planning on making with certain things. So one of the books that I use a lot in the summer and all year round is my ball canning book. So I have this and I will look through this and I'll put little markers in like this. I have my notebook here too. And I'll mark down things that I want to um, can this year or if it's something I already know that I like, then I have it all marked up saying that we liked it or if it's something new that I want to try. And then I'll look at what I need for that and I will write it down either on a list or in my notebook, my handy dandy notebook. And then I know what I wanna grow for my garden this year and what I wanna focus on. 
I will also, I just started doing this, but I'll have little sketches of the different beds in my garden and what we planted there in the past few years. So I can remember and I'll have little notes about whether or not those things did well. So for instance, in I have a large um, tunnel made out of cattle panels. And for the past three, no, past two years, I've grown Arminian yard long cucumbers on that panel. The first year they did really well. The second year they didn't do so great. This year we will not be growing Arminian yard longs on that panel. I will be growing them. They just won't be growing in that spot. So it's just an easy way to remember what you grew where and how well it did in that spot. All right, so I am gonna show you some of the things I'm growing now. I grow our winter squash every year. And if you don't know, winter squash are just squash that store through the winter. Doesn't mean they grow in the winter, they just store through the winter. So like a zucchini, you would pick it and it would last on your counter maybe a few weeks if you're lucky and then it turns to mush. Uh, butternut squash, which is a winter squash, if you properly store it, might last you all through the winter. So that's the difference. Now I do have these a little bit mixed up, but in my winter squash varieties for this year, I am trying a few new ones that I had purchased at MI Gardener last year at the end of the year. They were having a sale, a clearancing out all of their seeds from 2022. And I picked up this Golden Hubbard squash, which is a new one for me, a Blue Hubbard squash, which is a new one for me, and a Sweet Meat squash. All of these are new for me, um, and I have not tried them yet. So I'll probably do one of each of those plants and just see how well they do this year. And then I know I have in my pumpkin, my pumpkin bucket, I know what pumpkins did well for me last year and kind of pumpkins and winter squash are kind of interchangeable. The pumpkins will last a good long time if you properly um, clean them and store them. So I know that these pumpkins did really well for me last year. I'm not going to try to pronounce this name because it's French. Uh, I call them peanut pumpkins, but there's the pumpkin variety. And these Long Island cheese squash, they did really well for me last year. So I will grow both of these and I'll probably grow two of each of these plants. That's what I did last year. And I ended up with, I think 18 to 20 pumpkins last year from four plants of these. And that was with some of them not even reaching full maturity and I gave them to the chickens. So I'm not counting those as the 20. Uh, so I'll have those planted and then I'll try the sweet meat squash and the Hubbard squash and we will see how that goes. Now, one good thing is, even if you know, like let's say last year I planted the Long Island cheese pumpkins and they did awesome for me. They were great. Uh, we liked them, they tasted well, or they tasted good. And um, I said, you know what? That's all I wanna grow is just Long Island cheese pumpkins. You could do that, but you run the risk of next year Maybe the Long Island cheese pumpkins, the weather's not quite the same as it was last year. Maybe you have different pest pressure. Um, maybe you have a different amount of rain than you had last year. And for some reason, they just don't do as well. And that's what you were counting on. They were the, your only pumpkin or squash that you were growing. And now you don't have any. That happens. I've had years where I planted butternut squash and I had butternut squash coming out of the ears. And the very next year I planted butternut squash and I had like one butternut squash on all my butternut squash plants. Those things happen. It doesn't matter if you're a new gardener, if you're a seasoned gardener, it just sometimes there are things that are out of your control. So I like to grow a couple, if there's something that I know that we like to eat and I wanna have enough of them, then I will grow a couple different varieties. And if I truly hate a variety, we won't grow it again. But then you know, if one variety doesn't do so great, another one just might. So you give yourself a little bit more wiggle room, I guess, for your garden. And you're not just counting on one particular variety. All right, so those are my squash. Oh, I also have my friend Kelsey at Seed and Sparrow Homestead. We did a seed exchange a couple weeks ago and she gave me some Georgia candy roasters and I have been really wanting to try those. I had actually bought a plant start of a Georgia candy roaster 
um, from a girl who was growing them locally. I guess that would have been like 2020, maybe like three years ago. I can't remember. Anyway, I planted it. I only had one and uh, vine borer got it and killed it. So I never got to taste any of the Georgia candy roasters and I've heard that those are really good squash. So anyway, those are my squash I'll be planting for the year. Um, peppers. I plant a lot of peppers. That's something that it seems to be really expensive at the store, but you can grow them fairly easily. And you can grow a lot of them. Again, it depends on the weather. Um, last year we had a really weird summer. It took a long time for the nights to warm up. So we'd have warm days, but in the nights it would dip down still into like the 50s. I think all the way through June, which peppers don't really like it cold. So my peppers weren't as good. I mean, they weren't bad, but they weren't as good last year as they have been in the past. They didn't produce quite as much. Uh, we still got peppers. They tasted fine. We just didn't have them as prolifically as we've had them in past years. Anyway, um, this year I'll be growing these from Baker Creek. Uh, these are just tiny little snacking peppers. And I grow these specifically for my kids because they like to eat little peppers like that. They're just sweet peppers. Um, this one doesn't have a picture on it, but it's the Chocolate Beauty pepper. And that one I think is a big bell pepper. It's just a, a chocolate covered, chocolate colored bell pepper. And I like to grow the big bell peppers so that we can make stuffed peppers uh, and just put them in the freezer as freezer meals. And it's cheaper to grow your own peppers and to buy them in the store. Plus, you don't find chocolate colored peppers in the store. So that's why I'm growing that one. Uh, this is a canary bell, which is just going to be a yellow bell pepper. And then I have this. I think this is just like a dollar store seed pack. And it is a bell pepper mix. So I'll probably grow, I don't know, maybe two of each of these plants and that will be fine. That'll be enough bell peppers for us. Then I've heard a lot of good things about these. Oh, I can't get it to focus. There we go. They're shishito peppers and I believe they're a little bit spicy, but not super spicy. Um, but from what I understand, I've never grown these before, but I think that they can have a little bit of heat. They're not just straight sweet peppers and they're good for sauteing or cooking with. And I just grow the, I'm just gonna be growing these to try something new. So I'm not really sure yet. They don't have anything in mind for what I'm gonna do with these, but it's just gonna be kind of like a test this year to see if we like them. So I'll probably only grow one of these plants. All right, hot peppers. I'm excited about my hot peppers this year. I have a couple different recipes I wanna do with my hot peppers. I got these sugar rush peach hot peppers this year. I got these sugar rush peach that aren't focusing. There you go. And um, they're supposed to be spicy, but also taste fruity like peaches. So I thought that was very interesting. And I have a recipe that I found. I think this one is just online. I think I have it saved on my phone. This recipe is from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. It's a cayenne pepper sauce, and you need three pounds of hot peppers, but it could be any hot peppers you want. It says, for example, Anaheim, Hungarian, jalapenos. I wanna use these and make a, basically a hot sauce out of these sugar rush peach peppers. I don't know how that'll turn out, but ever since I read the description on these, I wanted to make a hot sauce out of them, so that's what I bought them for this year. Now to make one batch, which is only five pint jars, which is probably all the hot sauce that I'll need. I'm not gonna need to make like several batches batches of these. Uh, you need to have three pounds of hot peppers. So I'm thinking I might, I might actually plant a lot of these uh, just so they all ripen at the right time. I might do like five of these plants. And then I'm also going to do jalapenos. So for instance, if I don't, if this doesn't give me a good uh, harvest of these peppers, you could always mix and match with jalapenos for this recipe. Uh, so we need three pounds of hot peppers. So I'll be planting about five of these. And then I also have, 
I believe these were from Kelsey. The Habanero Caribbean Orange Hot Pepper. So I might plant maybe two of these. Again, I could put them in the hot sauce. And then I have Lemon Spice Jalapenos. And I think I have some seeds off to the side I haven't sorted out yet that I just got in the mail. I have these that I wanted to try. They, you can see on the back of these at my gardener packs, which is really helpful. You can get it to focus. Uh, they have this little heat measure, measure of how hot it is right there by my finger. And it's just showing that it's a little bit hot. It's not a super, super spicy pepper, but it says it has a tart flavor with a slight smoky heat. So that might actually be really nice for, um, for hot pepper sauce too. But these specifically say that they're good for pickling or eating fresh. So I might pick all these as well. So these I specifically got for eating fresh and pickling. Um, and again, this is a new variety to me. So because I don't have a very planned out use for them, I'll probably only plant one plant and see what I think. But I have somewhere, somewhere in here, I also have Craig's Grande jalapenos, but they're not in this pack. So I'm gonna have to find them. But those are gonna be specifically for I want to do a lot of cowboy candy this year and hot pepper jelly to give as Christmas gifts. So I will, I'll probably do maybe 10 jalapeno plants. That might be too much. I might regret doing 10, but I think I'm going to do 10. I think I'm going to do 10 jalapeno plants and I'm going to be making a lot of hot pepper jelly and a lot of cowboy candy this year because I know that my family in particular will love that and it will be a perfect Christmas gift for them. So that's what I'll be doing with the jalapenos. And of course you could just pickle jalapenos, which is also really good. All right, these are my, this is my um, summer squash container. And I am actually not going to grow any of these in here. I have yellow crookneck squash. I grew these last year. I really didn't like them. Nobody ate them, they ended up going to the chickens. I just have regular zucchini. I like them. I especially like to grill zucchini, um, and my son will eat zucchini a little bit, but the rest of my family is not a big zucchini. They aren't big zucchini lovers. So this year I have a better plan for my zucchini. I'm not gonna grow these, but I am gonna grow. Of course, again, I can't find it. It should be more organized, here it is. I've seen a lot of people talking about these. It is the Zucchini Rampicante. I think I'm saying that right, Zucchino Rampicante. And it's an Italian heirloom squash. And what's amazing about these is, well, number one, they grow up a trellis, which I really like, because the more things I can grow up a trellis, the better. It saves you space in the garden. But number two, with zucchini, regular zucchini, if you're growing zucchini and you let them go too long, everybody who grows zucchini knows about this, you let them go too long, which is like, five hours too long sometimes. Just kidding, it's longer than that. But it, that's what it feels like some days. You go look in the morning and you have a little baby zucchini plant and by the night time you go out there and you have a zucchini baseball bat. Um, and then they're kind of not usable. They have giant seeds in them. They don't taste great. Uh, you just kind of missed your window of opportunity. And for me, I either put it through the food processor and use it for zucchini shreds, for zucchini bread, whatever, or they go to the chickens. Um, and especially in a house where not many people eat zucchini, that happens a lot. So with this variety, if you let the zucchini go too long, it turns from a fresh eating squash to a winter squash. And basically you have a giant butternut squash. And this says that it's particularly well known for being used as a filling for ravioli. So, I'm really interested to try this. I can't vouch for it because I've never grown it before, but I've seen a lot of people saying they love it. And so that's my plan this year is that I'm going to grow this and I'm actually going to do, I've seen people say don't grow more than one plant because it produces so well, but I'm a glutton for punishment. I have that long tunnel where I had grown Arminian yard longs last year and they didn't do well. 
this past year so i need something new on there and i could probably fit four of these plants on that one because it's two cattle panels put together so i think i'm gonna do four that's probably way more than i need and i'll probably not do that again after next year but for next year i'm gonna grow four i'm just saying that right now we're gonna have four of them so that's it that's technically it's a winter squash but we're gonna put it in the fresh squash the summer squash box because we'll eat it also like a summer squash all right now this is my herb container and i have in here tons and tons and tons that on the there tons and tons and tons of basil lots of different varieties of basil um i have tulsi basil or holy basil which is nice for a tea um then i just have your regular sweet basils um these are all sweet basil which seems like a lot of basil but for basil one of my goals every year is to make and freeze enough pesto to last us for the whole year until it's basil season again the next year. We tried two years ago to do it and we only lasted for maybe two months into the winter before we were out of pesto. My husband, my daughter and I all love pesto. We love pasta with pesto, pesto on our pizza. I mean, you could do all kinds of things with pesto. Put it on your chicken, make a crazy salad and drizzle it over the top, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you do with pesto. And if you go to the store and check out the price of pesto, number one, it's not that great. Number two, it has bad, disgusting oils in it, not like good quality oils like olive oil. It'll usually have a mix of olive oil with canola oil or sunflower oil, something like that. Um, and then the price. Just a little tiny jar of pesto can be upwards of six to ten dollars. So last year was the first year we actually succeeded i think in growing enough basil to make pesto to last us for the entire year we still have plenty of it downstairs so that's why we're growing so much basil uh, i probably will not need all of these packs here i just ended up with this many because i think the hardware store down the street had seed packs on sale for like 10 for a dollar something like that so we got a lot of basil Cilantro, I have a couple different varieties of cilantro. I have the slow bolt cilantro. I don't know where I got this one, but it's just an organic slow bolt cilantro. This one, again, I think it was from the hardware store down the street. Um, I might have more cilantro in here, but cilantro, basically, we just grow it for fresh eating and for putting in salsa, which I do make and freeze a lot of salsa i haven't i made and canned a lot of salsa last year too but i didn't care for the recipes that i found so we haven't eaten a lot of that fresh red salsa um that canned red salsa this year so i probably won't be be making much of that anymore i do however have a recipe that i like to make that isn't um, necessarily canning a canning approved recipe so i'll just make a lot of it and freeze it usually or run it through the freeze dryer uh, so that's what we'll be doing with our cilantro. So for cilantro, I will actually just continually sow this throughout the season. There comes a point in the summer when um, it just gets too hot for cilantro and it will bolt too fast. So I'll continually sow it throughout the spring. I'll actually start the first ones inside so they're ready to go out as soon as possible. They're pretty cold hardy, so um, they'll be out pretty early but I will continue to do that until it warms up too much to keep planting them and then I'll do it again in the fall. So that's cilantro. All right, so dill. I have two different varieties of dill. I have fern leaf dill and bouquet dill. I can't really speak to the flavor difference between the two of them. I've grown both of them in years past. I don't really notice a difference. I basically just use dill for making dill pickles. Um, and also my daughter really likes it on butter popcorn. So that's what we grow dill for. Chamomile. I probably won't plant any new chamomile this year. It self seeds uh, basically every year from the plants I planted in the past. So this one is just showing you what kind I've grown in the past. I've been growing Zlatiland chamomile. And again, it'll self seed. So I'm not going to plant any more of that. 
I have some sweet marjoram to try this year. I'll probably only do one of those because it is a perennial and it is uh, similar to like uh, oregano. So I don't think that you'll need more than one plant. It should get really nice and big and take over and spread. So one of these. And then somehow, I think my husband actually accidentally picked up another oregano. Don't need this, I should give it away. I have an oregano, uh, I have an oregano out in the garden right now and it's huge, it's a perennial. It takes over just like mint and keeps spreading, which is good. I'm not complaining about that. I love the oregano, it smells beautiful and we give a lot of it to our chickens. So it's a nice one to have, but I won't be planting anymore. All right, so those are my herbs. Some of them at least. There's some more spread out. I'm just noticing over here and the things I just purchased that I don't have a categorized yet. I have a niece. I'll definitely be growing some of that. That is a perennial too. As far as I know. Yep, perennial zones four through eight. We are zone six. So this is definitely a perennial. I might grow a couple of these just to make sure that it does well. Uh, since this is the first year I'm growing it. And also, it's just a pretty little flower. And I try and grow as many flowers as I can just for the pollinators. Especially if they're perennials, then it's extra good because they keep coming back. All right. I am going to show you. I have tomatillos. Last year was the first year that I successfully grew tomatillos. And I have one and only one reason for growing tomatillos, and that is tomatillo salsa. So, we for years have been buying salsa verde from I don't remember the company we're getting it from I think Frontera and also Siete maybe makes a green a green salsa I can't remember uh but we would get that specifically just to make chicken enchiladas because we like the salsa verde on chicken enchiladas and it's not cheap so I thought you know what I'm gonna try growing my own um yeah, what are these things called? Tomatillos. I'm gonna grow my own tomatillos so I can make my own salsa verde. And the first year, I knew that you had to have more than one tomatillo. They have to be able to cross pollinate with each other. Um, so I knew you had to have more than one and I didn't plant enough and only one survived. I don't know what happened. I think I had bad potting soil or something two years ago, but a lot of the plants I started at home, they just really didn't do so great. And, um, so I only had one tomatillo and it was a beautiful plant, but it didn't make any tomatillos. So last year I was like, no way am I going to end up with just one tomatillo. And I planted, I think 16 and they all lived. Last year I had a wonderful year for all of the seedlings that I started at home and they all did amazing. And so I ended up with 16 tomatillo plants. But as much as I thought that was crazy and I didn't need all those tomatillos, I didn't really know anyone else who wanted them to share them with, so I just planted them all. And we actually, I made salsa verde. I felt like I was canning salsa verde every day for weeks on end. And believe it or not, we are almost through our, our salsa verde already for the year. That's how much of it we eat. I think we actually like it better than regular salsa. So this year I got the Rio Grande um, verde tomatillos, which is what I grew last year and they did wonderful and we'll do those again. And then I have purple tomatillos and I'd like to try those too and see what the salsa tastes like with purple tomatillos. So I'm thinking between the two of them, I'll probably grow at least 16 plants again because that wasn't even enough green salsa for us, which actually I think I kind of gave up on canning the salsa verde eventually because I was going through chemo at the same time as I was canning green salsa and I was just exhausted. So this year, probably I won't grow more than 16 because I could get more salsa out of those 16 plants than what I ended up with, but I definitely won't grow less than 16. So that's my plan for the tomatillos. And also you need um, hot peppers to put in with that. So we'll also need jalapenos for this, which is another reason why I'm growing a lot of jalapenos. All right, so that's our salsa verde. Um, eggplants. I'm going to try eggplants again this year for the first time in several years. I had a bad, bad problem with pests and my eggplants in years past. So for the past, I think it's been 
three, maybe two, but I think three years since I planted eggplant because I just decided to stop for a while. I had such a hard time with eggplant and pests that were just ravaging them. I would have no leaves left. I think it was flea beetles. Not for sure. Could have been something else. I'm going to plant a lot of eggplants this year and see if I can get them to work. Sometimes if you get, if you have something that your pest pressure is just too much for and you give it a couple years of a break, you can try again and it'll work fine. Uh, whatever pest it was will have moved on. So I will try them again this year. I have a Turkish orange eggplant. I have a bunch of eggplants I got from Kelsey. A Casper eggplant, which was a white eggplant. Long purple eggplant. Rosa Bianca eggplant. I'm going to try at least one, if not two, of all of these eggplants. I have discovered that if you slice and bread eggplant and then freeze them on uh, just parchment paper on a tray and then put them into bags that so they last forever in the freezer and you can just pull them out and fry them up or pop them in the oven, put them in your air fryer, whatever, and it just makes an excellent side with spaghetti or um, if you're going to have a night where you eat a big salad and you just want something that's a little bit meatier without having to go make meat, um, then eggplant works really well. So that's my plan for the eggplant. I also want to do a recipe in my ball canning book that I thought looked really good, but I've never tried it before. So it's going to be brand new. I actually have it written down here. It is an eggplant caponata. So I would like to try doing that this year and um, canning some of that. So we will see if I actually like it. If you're, one thing that you wanna remember if you're canning something for the first time, even if it's something that you know you like normally but you've never canned it yourself before, don't, you don't necessarily wanna make like 100 jars of it because you might not like it. So eggplant caponata, never had it, looked good, had a lot of stuff in that I like, uh, I'll probably just make one batch and see how we like it and if we use it. Uh, and then next year, you'll know. So if you liked it this year, next year you can grow more and then you can kind of judge how much of it you need for the year. So that is the eggplant. Um, and I have some things floating around in here too. Like I picked this up on sale, mini pink popcorn. Now I'm kind of second guessing myself because I never have good luck with corn, but this is popcorn. Um... You have to grow a lot of corn to make it worth your while, and probably one pack is not enough. So I'll try it. I'll probably plant this whole pack and see, because my daughter was really excited about it. She really wanted the pink popcorn. So I'll probably plant this whole pack. But just remember, if you're doing corn of any kind, you need to grow a lot of it. Uh, otherwise, it can't pollinate, and you just don't get a good harvest. So there's that. Ah, uh, now we are on to tomatoes. This is where I really have a problem. This is why I started growing my own things from seed, basically. Because I wanted to try all the tomatoes that there were. I have blue cream berry tomatoes. It's just a cherry tomato. I have black strawberry cherry tomatoes. This is just, I think this whole thing is just my like smaller cherry tomato container. All of the tomatoes in here are just cherry tomatoes. Regular cherry tomatoes. I probably won't plant those. Um, Rosella cherry tomatoes. It said that they're bred for superior flavor by gourmet genetics. Massive trusses of pink, purple cherries with a smoky blush. Half inch fruit, superb, fresh, or cooked. This is what, I can't read the back of seed packets because I just buy them all. I don't need this many cherry tomatoes. I will probably plant oh, Brad's Atomic Grape. We grow these every single year. My husband likes them. The kids like them. They're just a pretty prolific tomato with a good flavor, and they're pretty to look at. So it's focusing. There you go. Um, they get their name. Honestly, they look like Atomic tomatoes. So I have those. And then I have. Um, I have these which are tiny little currant tomatoes, and they're itty bitty 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 bitty. I grow these specifically for my youngest daughter. Um, she likes to pick tomatoes in the garden and eat them like snacks. And she is three this year, but in years past, like even back when she was one, I, 
she would just pick them and eat them and I didn't like her running around the garden with cherry tomatoes in her mouth because that's dangerous so I'd grow these tiny tiny ones so I didn't have to um, worry as much they're just itty bitty bitty so those were for her and then I actually one of my free seed varieties from Baker Creek this year was this um, tiny spoon tomato which is also it's called a micro mini tomato and um, I micro one of each of these so I have an orange one and a red one they're really good for nothing except eating in the garden but they're a novelty and then I will probably grow one of each of these other varieties of cherry except for the standard red cherry I have no need to grow that when I have all of these other types of cherry tomatoes so those are the cherry tomatoes now I have to be honest I grew 60 tomato plants last year I don't need 60 tomato plants but tomatoes are basically like my garden love language i can't have a garden without all the tomatoes that i can possibly fit in so you do not need to plant as many tomatoes as what i'm about to show you find your favorites and grow those but i'm a little crazy all right so those are the cherry tomatoes this has my sauce making tomatoes in it and this one is one I've never tried before. It's going to be new to me this year, Castelluto Florentino Tomato. It says it's a super productive and early maturing Italian variety. Deeply ruffled fruit make flavorful bright red sauce. Also lovely and delicious when sliced. So that got me. I'm going to be growing these. I also have some San Marzanos in here. I probably will not grow these. Um, these were just cheap clearance seeds and so I have them just in case, but probably won't be growing them. I also have this one, the orange accordion. This one is supposed to be a good sauce one too. It says deeply lobed with few seeds and juicy meaty flesh, amazing for sauces and slicing. Easily reach 20 ounces each and make a perfect stuffing tomato too. So this one also, I will probably put this in uh, with my sauce tomatoes here instead of categorizing it with my orange tomatoes and lighter colored tomatoes, which I also have a pack for. All right, these are my darker tomatoes. I have a lot of these. Um, this is a Black Beauty tomato. This will be my first year growing this one. Cherokee Purple, which is my very favorite, absolute favorite tomato is Cherokee Purple. I know that's boring, you can get them anywhere, but that the flavor profile of a Cherokee Purple is just one of my favorites. So I have this pack and I have a big Creek pack of Cherokee purple, which is probably the one that I'll grow. Um, I will definitely grow the Black Beauty, classic beef steak. I mean, you can't go wrong with classic beef steak. I have, this will be a first time for me. I have <clears throat> this Trip L crop. I think it's supposed to be like triple crop tomato. And um, this will be my first time growing this one, but it says it's insanely productive. So I got that one again seed swapped with Kelsey for these. These are old German tomatoes and it says that they're huge. I'll grow those. Brandywine, another favorite. Definitely always have these in my garden. Um, so I'll be growing at least one of those. Black from Tula tomato. I've never tried that. I'll be doing one of those. Aunt Ruby's German Green, a new variety again. I'll be doing one of those. These, there's no picture, um, but these were orange peach tomatoes. These are also from Baker Creek, and I have grown these for the past, this will be the third year, I think. There's nothing special about them. Well, there's something unusual about them. They're an orange color, a peachy color with a fuzzy peachy skin that literally feels fuzzy when you touch it. Um, there's nothing extraordinary about the flavor, but this has been every year my very first tomato to ripen and just consistently ripens throughout the year, probably gives me the most tomatoes. They're not very big. They're maybe like this big, like a little slicer, tiny, um, bigger than a cherry tomato, but smaller than a, any other tomato. And I think I have a couple of these seeds left in here, so I might just plant them because I have them uh, and because they are so consistent. And that's it. Oh, I have this. This was a free seed, a legend tomato. I got this with an order. Couple years ago but it's a determinant if you don't know the difference between determinant and indeterminate tomatoes uh indeterminate will keep growing and growing and growing for as long as the growing season goes on they will not stop getting taller but a determinate tomato 
has a specific cutoff point where it will grow that big and no further. And I grow all my tomatoes up trellises, so I never grow determinate tomatoes. Now, if you're gonna grow in a pot on your back patio or in a small space, these are really good to grow. Um, I just, I never grow them. All right, so those were all my red and darker tomatoes. On to the orange tomatoes, rest of the orange tomatoes. I have Dad's Sunset Tomato. Um, I don't remember why I bought this. I haven't tried this one yet. Probably just because it's pretty. And I'll probably only try one or two of these this year. I have the Yellow Stuffer Tomato, which I thought would just be a fun tomato to make and maybe make some freezer meals, stuffing it like a stuffed pepper. So there's that, that's from MI Gardener. Berkeley tie-dye green. I've been growing these for the past several years and they're just a pretty tomato. So I'll probably do one or two of these. Uh, I don't remember. I think that they're pretty good. I don't remember anything specifically to tell you about the flavor, just that they were good. There was nothing wrong with them. Uh, they got to be a pretty big sized tomato. They're a, a larger fruit tomato. They are usually over a pound and they were just a gorgeous tomato. I mean, look at that color. So I'll grow more of those. Solar Flare Tomato. I will definitely be growing one or two of these again because they're just pretty. Pretty striped tomato. These white snowball tomatoes. I I grew these two years ago and I've honestly never regrown them because they didn't taste like anything to me. So I'm not going to waste my space with a tomato that I didn't like. So I have these, but I'm not going to grow them. Oh, and then one more orange tomato I didn't put in the pack yet, and that's the Dr. Oh, I don't know how you say it. Weish's, Dr. Weish's yellow tomato. Uh, everybody online talks about these. If you watch Roots and Refuge, she talks about these. Kelsey, my friend at Seed and Sparrow, she is growing right down the street from me, and she says these grow really well, and they're one of her favorite tomatoes. So I had to try it too. So that's it for those tomatoes. And actually, that might be all of my tomatoes. It is, we got through all of the tomatoes. So it's safe to say I will be growing a lot of tomatoes again this year. Uh, I do like to try and can all of our own sauce if I can. We're already out of sauce for the year from what I canned last year, which is not good because it's only February. Um, so I definitely need to can more sauce this year. Again, last year I was going through chemo, so I, I had limited amount of time that I could stand over the hot canner. So for how our summer went, I think I did pretty well with how much sauce we did, but this year I wanna do better. Uh, and then we also have our freeze dryer. So we'll be freeze drying diced tomatoes, which is wonderful. You can just take them out and throw them into soup or pastas or whatever. Um, and salsas, I'll be making salsas. And of course we just eat tomatoes fresh. So those are all the things we do with tomatoes. And that's it for the tomatoes. Now we can move on to, let's see. Oh, melons. I'm not even gonna get into melons because I just cannot grow melons here. I don't know if it's because I haven't found the right melon for our area. We're in central Pennsylvania. It doesn't really get, I think, hot enough for melons to really thrive. I don't know. I've seen other people grow melons farther north than us and do fine. For some reason, I just cannot grow melons here. And I've talked to a lot of people in our area who've tried to grow melons. A few have had success, but nobody's really like had melons that took off and did wonderfully. So I buy them. We do have farmers in the area who grow melons and I just buy them from them because I'm sick of fighting with them. We're going to move on to flowers. Another one of my favorite things to grow last year. We had a bad flower year last year. Um, zinnias are one of my favorite flowers to grow and I planted probably three or four packs of zinnias and got one zinnia plant and I always just direct sow zinnias. I've never had a problem direct sowing zinnia, zinnias ever, never. In all the years I've been gardening here, we've lived in this house for eight years and I've grown a garden in this house for eight years uh, and I've gardened before that but every area I grow in is a little bit different and this particular garden I have grown for eight years <clears throat> and I have never had a problem with zinnias until this last year. And I think we had either a bird or a chipmunk. 
some little critter that came and ate every single one of those seeds or the sprouts when they first came up. And they also did all my melons. I tried to grow melons last year and it took like three plantings of melons. I would see the little seed sprout and then the next day it was gone, which I think is a, a chipmunk. Uh, but anyway, zinnias, I never even saw them sprout. They just never came up except for one plant. So this year I'm going to actually start my zinnias inside and see if they do better that way and plant them out when they're big enough that a little critter is not going to come eat them anymore. So for flowers, I have zinnias. I have these um, green envy zinnias. I'll probably grab another pack of just like a mixed zinnia pack uh, at like the store. Nothing fancy, just something. If we go to Tractor Supply or the hardware store or something, grab some more zinnias. I have been doing calendula the past several years. And that last year was a really good year for me for calendula. I had plenty of them. They uh, took a little while to get going for me for some reason, but when they did, they produced like crazy. And I had a lot of different calendula. I think I have another, yeah, I do. <clears throat> I have another container in my second seed bin. I know it's crazy. Uh, with more calendula. I like to plant a lot of calendula. I make calendula salve out of it. Um, I just think they're pretty. And last year, these were the two I did last year. I had these strawberry blonde calendula from Baker Creek and this specific beauty mix from Baker Creek. This year I also have pink surprise calendula from MI Gardener and I think I have another one somewhere. I think I got, yep, Snow Princess Calendula. And I'll probably plant all of these. I'm not going to lie. I will I'll most definitely plant all of these because I just love having them in my garden. They're beautiful. If you haven't grown Calendula, um, they're useful. I think you can eat Calendula petals. I think they're edible. Don't quote me on that. Don't go eat them without double checking that. But I'm pretty, yeah, it says harvest for bouquets or to dry for teas and tinctures. Um, I've never done that. I usually just use them for bouquets or for making salve. It's great for uh, if you have eczema or skin conditions. Um, I made a bunch of salve this past year and gave it out for Christmas gifts. And I'm pretty much, I think I've pretty much gone through all of it. So I will be planting all of these calendula. <clears throat> Yarrow. This will be my first year to grow yarrow. And again, this one is really good for making salves, especially if you have um, eczema or to put on wounds, anything like that. But this is a perennial, unlike the calendula self sows a lot, but it's not a perennial. Uh, this is a perennial, so if you plant it, it will come back. And let's see, it doesn't say what areas it's perennial in, but um, I'll be planting I don't know how many I'll do of these. I've been wanting to expand my perennial herbs and flowers, so I might do maybe like four of them. That sounds like a lot for a perennial, but I'll probably do four, four of these plants. Sunflowers. I have another pack of sunflowers somewhere that's just all sunflowers. I don't know where it is right now. Um, I really like the mammoth Russian sunflowers. They're just really predictable. You always get nice big sunflower heads. Uh, I also have grown the, I forget what it's, oh, double sun king sunflower. And those are the ones that have like the big fluffy heads. They also get a lot of um, seeds, which is good. Um, I've grown the, not going to remember what they're called, but they're like a dwarf sunflower. They only get about this big, but they still have a big sunflower head on them. So they're really cool looking. They look like something out of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, the Devil Sun Kings look like Van Gogh flowers. They're beautiful. I've grown like chocolate cherry sunflowers. Um, I don't know, I've grown all kinds of sunflowers and I'll probably have much, well, not probably, I will have many, many more than just two packs of sunflowers for this year. Um, I just don't know where they are at the moment and I'll be ordering more. Sunflowers are one of the things we plant in abundance because we have chickens and we do uh, runs of meat chickens and sunflower seeds really fatten them up and they help to just offset feed costs. 
and we'll dry them, give them to the chickens in the winter when it's getting colder and they want a treat and they just work out really well for us. So we grow a lot of sunflowers specifically for that reason and they're pretty. So that's that for the sunflowers. <sighs> I have, I mean, the rest of these are just basically for looks. This particular one, I got this petunia this year from Baker Creek. I never grow petunias, but this one said that it's an edible petunia that has a delicious cherry flavor and can be used in baking and homemade beverages, which I don't know what I'll ever use it for, but that sounded really cool to me. So we got that. Um, I got this one my husband wanted. It's called a toothache plant. He thought that was pretty cool. It makes your mouth numb. So you can actually make tea out of it and it will make your mouth numb. But they're a cute little plant and I thought I would try growing them. I'm gonna grow some status, just specifically for cutting, for making bouquets. Straw flower, again, same reason, cutting. Now here's some zinnia seeds, that pink zinnia here. Amaranth, I just thought it was pretty. Oh, sorghum. I thought these would be really cool for fall, um, like fall decor, fall bouquets. Also, you can feed it to your animals. That's that. These don't have a picture on them, but these are nasturtium, another edible flower. Uh, we've I've grown nasturtium in my garden for probably the past like four years, and I've tasted it, but we don't really eat it. Um, you could you could put it in your salad. It's peppery. Uh, it doesn't. There's nothing wrong with it. I just have never really needed to eat it and it wasn't something that I craved eating so I grow it because I think it's pretty. Also I've read before that nasturtium is really good to feed to your chickens. I think it has like deworming properties but I could be wrong um, and also it's supposed to make the yolks a darker richer color so nasturtium is one I always grow. I have some poppies in here, the giant rattle poppy. I've been growing this the past couple years. Uh, it's a perennial so it keeps coming back and it makes a giant, um, the giant pod full of poppy seeds and you can use them for making anything you put poppy seeds in. And then this was just a free seed variety. It was Californian poppies and I'll probably try growing those too. Those are just annuals. Um, these flowers were all in bags cause I was already cold stratifying them. I have echinacea, which I just like to grow. You can make tinctures out of it, do all kinds of fun things, um, teas. But I, aside from even that, I just like growing them. They're one of my favorite flowers. This one I had just found from Baker's Creek. And it is like a double, a double fluffy echinacea. It's called Paradiso Super Duper Echinacea. It's a dazzling double petaled echinacea in the most charming rosy tones. Uh, this plant is a medicinal plant that is a perennial and will bloom in its very first year. 36 inch tall plants with some variation. So that. This is an Agastache plant, which you can make teas out of. It tastes, this one particularly is supposed to taste and smell like root beer. Uh, I already actually have some of that going downstairs, which it's too early to be growing, but they needed something green. Rosemary, I have some of that growing downstairs already. Um, asters, I just thought they were pretty. Wanted to grow them. Snapdragons, these were my very favorite. Um, when I was younger, uh, growing up, we had a little, a little greenhouse right down the street from us, a couple blocks away, and they'd only be open from like, I don't know, April through July probably. And I would take my wagon and my allowance, and I would pull the wagon down to the greenhouse and buy all the plants I possibly could, fill up the wagon, and drag them back home. And I did that as a pretty young child. Um, and I had my own flower garden and snapdragons were one of my very favorites. So I almost always have snapdragons in my garden. <sighs> Lavender. I already have some of this going downstairs. And this one is swamp milkweed. And I decided I want to grow this this year just so that I have um, butterflies for my daughter. So we could hope we're going to hope to get a monarch butterfly in our yard. We will see. But that's what all of those are for. 
I have more in here that I haven't even sorted through. Arugula. I love arugula even more than lettuce. So I will definitely have a lot of arugula in the garden this year. This is wild rocket arugula, wild arugula. <clears throat> I wanted to try pink celery this year, again, for juicing and for putting in soups, cooking with. I got this Merlot lettuce as a free seed. Oh, borage. I forgot about that one. This will be my first year growing borage. I haven't actually ever grown this, but you're, it's edible. You can eat it. It tastes like cucumbers. Um, the pollinators love it. Just thought it'd be a fun thing to try. I'm going to grow dandelions this year to put in my salads. I know. It's a weird thing to grow. You could probably go pick them in the yard, but I want to grow my own dandelions. And then I couldn't pass these up. They're called Job's Tears and you can eat them. It's a, a grain, um, but they also use them for natural beads and I thought my daughter would really like those. So that's it. Those are all of our seeds, what I'm growing them for, um, what kinds of things we'll be making out of them. And <clears throat> I wanted to show you really quickly some of my seed setup. So we have downstairs, oh, little Lego hat. Um, we have set up downstairs for the past, oh, I don't know, several years. We've just had a kitchen table in our basement, an old kitchen table that we don't use anymore that was kind of falling apart. Um, we set that up downstairs and then we hung grow lights from the ceiling on chains so that they're really close to the table. And that has been our grow station. Now our garden has gotten so big and we start so many plants from seed that that's no longer working for us. It doesn't have enough room. Last year, it, the whole table was crowded out and it just wasn't enough. So this year I do have some shelving wire, um, metal wire, wire shelving that my husband picked up at an auction and we'll be setting that up this weekend. I have the lights still going downstairs on my table, but they're all gonna get moved over to the wire grow rack and we'll be growing over there. And I don't use anything fancy. Um, I just, I have been just getting these types of pans from like Walmart, dollar store, whatever. And I will put, I just have a bunch of these and I will just put them in this so that you can water from the bottom and this will catch the extra water. Um, I would like to get a soil blocker this year so that I don't have to keep rebuying all of these plastic things. I don't like having to do that. Um, ooh, they're full of dirt. So I think I will be ordering a soil blocker. I'll use these up first um, since I have them. But all you really need are to have something to start your plants in. It could be this, it could be red solo cups with drainage holes. Um, I've done that many, many years. And it could be ones you saved from plants you bought from the greenhouse last year and just saved a little little um seed cells from anything like that or you get a soil blocker um and then something to put them in so that's just my two cents and i hope that if you haven't grown anything before i hope this inspires you to pick out something to try you don't have to have a big garden just grow something put something in a pot and grow it because not only is it like free therapy um but you could find something you absolutely love that you can't go out and buy in the store and you know where it came from. And there's something satisfying about growing something with your own two hands and then eating it and knowing that you grew that and it came from your own backyard. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.